Mr. Head Coach Kirby Smart, uh, we will go straight for questions rather than opening remarks. We'll go right here to your left. Hi, Coach. Uh, Clint Swites here, Great American Sports Network in Kansas City. Obviously, um, you guys haven't quite reached the, the pinnacle that you, you've wanted to the last few years, but just kind of talk about what it's meant to, to this Georgia Bulldog fan base to have risen to, the, to this level and to have gotten this close and obviously right on the verge of, of where you want to be. Probably not as much as it'll mean if we do reach the pinnacle, but uh, they're a great fan base. They're one of the most avid um, groups there are out there. They support us and they travel well. They go places. Um, they've been a big part of our recruiting success. When you fill up a spring game with 93,000 people, it's pretty uh, evident that they care about the game of football. And uh, that's what these kids like in recruiting. So they've been a tremendous part of our success. They've embraced our staff and our players. Um, and they will because uh, football means something in the state of Georgia. To your right, second row. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, Rachel. Um, a couple questions for you. One, the first being, um, I know how relentless you are. You and I had a conversation after Sugar Bowl many years ago when you were at, not many years ago, but when you were at Alabama and we, you were talking about waiting on the perfect job and wanting to take the perfect job and really, you know, thinking about it. Um, I'm curious because having known that about you and also the way you recruit, I'm curious what you've done in the off season to become a better coach. Yeah, I think we always look internally to say, what can we do better? Um, we do that as a staff. Um, I hope each one of you guys do that because I think, you know, when you're green, you grow, and when you're right, you rot. And we're always trying to stay green. So we take our coaching staff places. Our guys went and visited uh, several NFL places. Myself went and visited with Dan Quinn over at Atlanta Falcons and uh, got a lot of respect for him and shared some ideas. He's um, done a tremendous job with that organization. Um, visited with some general managers in the NFL. And uh, just think that when you grow and you go get new ideas, it brings uh, a freshness to your program that your players don't get bored with the monotonous same old, same old. One last one. Yesterday, Commissioner Sankey was talking about, and I really appreciated it, um, mental health. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, as a, a coach and somebody who's been around football for a really long time, what are you doing to break that stigma of, you know, hey, I need to be tough, I need to be masculine, not talk about this? What are you doing in your program to, to address mental health, coach? Yeah, Ron Corson, our medical uh, staff, do a tremendous job. He's went out and hired uh, three different people within mental health. They consult our players when they first get there. They meet with them. They talk to them. They visit with them. They develop relationships. They're on our players every day, and we talk all the time. If you need to speak to them, you need to spend time with them, visit with them, we encourage you to have that relationship. I've got a brother um, that works in the mental health uh, field and uh, have, have been able to learn a lot from him. Um, that in our culture, football culture, sometimes that's not accepted. Having a brother that works in that field, it's helped me tremendously to understand it. To your left, Coach, in the camera pane. Hey, Kirby. Uh, Carl Prather, WFF TV in Huntsville. Would you walk us through the progression of Monty Rice and the expectation uh, for him, uh, also with the rest of your defensive unit uh, on defense? Yeah, Monty is a kid that came in early, enrolled early, and was able to kind of help us a lot. And he got dinged up last year, and I think it – He's ended up sitting out two to three games, and it's tough on him because he's a good football player, and uh, he's been healthy ever since. Um, we think he's going to be a tremendous asset for us. He's going to be in a thick competition at inside linebacker where we've got three or four guys that are fighting for two starting jobs, and we think Monty's going to be right in the middle of that. As far as the progression of the rest of the defense, we're trying to grow some, some guys who played a lot last year. I think across the board, the 11 positions on our defensive unit outside of maybe one or two, they're all up for grabs. We got a two deep that we think maybe, I don't know if they're going to be superstars, but they're good football players. And the competition is going to prove itself out in fall camp that who is going to be the guy to go out and grab this position. And the good news is they get to go against pretty good offense while they're competing to do it. Up on the camera bank, blue shirt. Yeah, Channing was a bright spot for us last year, especially on special teams. Um, he was able to develop. He was a kid that played a lot of outside backer in his high school program, had not played as much inside backer. We put him inside. He's really fast. 
Um, he was able to play, made some plays in the SEC championship game and that we kind of developed him as the year went on and felt like, hey, if we're going to get to where we need to go, he's going to have to be a guy that can play on third down for us. He was able to go in and make some plays against Kentucky on third down, made some plays against uh, Alabama on third down, and he's really helped us. Up on the camera bank, and please ask your question loudly. He does it through his actions. I mean, this, this, this guy is the epitome of what college football is about. Number one, he stands up for the right things. He's uh, very strong in his faith. He, is, uh, he lives it. I mean, he lives it and he breathes it. And he does that with our players in a way that is not rubbing it in their face. And I have a lot of respect for his ability to be who he is, be confident in who he, who he is, and still lead our team. Uh, and not create any jealousy while he's doing it. So uh, it's a lot, of, lot of credit given to his parents and his upbringing because they have done a tremendous job with all their sons. And he's got a brother that's going to be at Auburn, which creates a unique situation. But he is a great young man. Coach, to your left, second row. Coach, you've been involved now the last two years with two unbelievable games, obviously against Alabama. Just kind of talk about what you've learned from those, other than, of course, you probably want to win next time. Yeah, get rid of their backup quarterback, right? I mean, that's part of the plan. But uh, they, they do a tremendous job, and we haven't finished the way we need to. Um, and to be honest with you, a lot of that goes right here to me. we got to do a better job finishing the game and stay on top of it. And they get some credit for that because they've got a good football program. They've won a lot of football games, and um, they're a physical team. What I think we've shown is that we can match that physicality. We haven't finished that physicality, but we're not getting shoved around out there. And that's part of the deal against Alabama. You've got to be able to go out and play physical. Coach, to your right, second row. Hey, Kirby, uh, Brooks Cabina from The Advocate. How, how do you and your staff personally monitor the NCAA transfer portal just in terms of roster building? And how do you feel other programs do that as well? You know, I'm going to be honest with you guys. That, that, that is, there's a bigger deal made of the monitoring of it. I'm not talking about the fact they had the transfer portal, but I mean, I think a lot of people really think that it's a, this huge big deal. And at our level in the SEC, I don't think you're going to see a ton of kids going into the portal and coming to the SEC. What you see is grad transfers. You see guys that graduate from their university and then have an opportunity to go anywhere they want and they choose to come to the SEC. But you'll probably be seeing more guys exiting through the portal than entering through the portal to the SEC. So we, we don't have to monitor it. I mean, we don't sit there and have a guy look over it and see um, if there's a player in there that we think can make us better, then there's that possibility. The problem is you may or may not have that player for a year, where if you go sign a football player and you can bring that player in, he's immediately eligible to play, and he has three more years to play after he plays once. When you get a kid out of the portal, he may or may not be eligible, and so it's not an immediate fix, per se, unless you know that player is going to be eligible immediately, and that's up to the NCAA. Coach, to your left front row. Kirby West, Blanket Chip, WXI in Atlanta. Uh, taking you back a few years with this one, what do you remember about Champ Bailey when he played at Georgia? Did you see any uh, future NFL Hall of Fame tendencies when you were – I know you're not going to take the credit for it, but <laughs> helping him uh, along his way at Georgia. No, I, I'll be honest, he helped me more than I helped him. I mean, that's, that, he covered people, he ran fast, he protected me in a lot of ways. But he was younger, and, and I say younger, a, a year below me, and then his older brother was almost a mentor, a, a very good person. I leaned on Ronald. So when I got there, Ronald was there, who was uh, a good mentor for me, a South Georgia kid that came up to Athens. And then when Champ came, I felt like I owed him that same uh, brotherhood, and uh, he and I roomed together on road games, and he and I have stayed close. Uh, his son just came over and participated in our football camp. Shockingly, he won the fastest kid there. Um, <laughs> so it does help to have a, a father be a Hall of Famer, and uh, my son probably won't be running that fast. Um, but he is a tremendous person. Champ has never changed who he is, what he stands for. Uh, tremendous mom, tremendous family. And it just gives me a sense of pride to see what all he's been able to accomplish. Because he's never been a guy that it was about him. You know, he, he made some really Superman type plays. I mean, I remember the guy playing receiver and like 98 snaps or something against LSU one year, going both ways. He had to get IV'd at halftime. 
front row right here. Coach, good morning. Hey, Jeff Sintel, AJC Dog Nation. It seems like recruiting has changed a lot since even your first team at Georgia. New signing periods, accelerated timelines, your staff recruits nationally. But it seems like your program is slowing things down, going through its progressions a little bit. Can you just discuss the philosophy of how you guys have looked at a staff and maybe altered the old way to this new cycle? Yeah, I, 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 it's definitely changed from the first year to now, and that has a lot to do with the signing date. The, the signing date changed everything. It sped everything up. It made it where if you don't sign guys in December, there may not be guys available. It's like being the back of the grocery store when you're going to get groceries, and it's July 4th, and they're all gone. So you want to go fill up your basket as soon as you can. Um, we want to make certain we're getting the right kind of people and the right kind of players. I don't think enough – is done on a kid's senior year. I think what you'll find in the SEC is maybe 80%, 90% of the team's spots are full going into the senior season, where I feel like I need to look and see what they do in their senior season, because there's a lot of guys that have played really well. And you look at, a, I mean, Bradley Chubb jumps out to me. He was a kid that was probably under-recruited, but when you watch a senior tape, he was a good senior player, but he had missed out on some opportunities at some SEC schools. So I, I would like to be able to evaluate guys longer, but once you have a player that wants to commit that is a really good football player, I think you've got to take that, especially if they've got great academics, because those two go hand in hand at the University of Georgia. So we, we don't necessarily want to be full, but we want to be able to go out and look at kids their senior year and find out how they're playing. The camera bank in the middle, please speak. Jim will do a tremendous job. He's going to do a great job with the quarterback. Um, he's a, he understands offensive football. Uh, he's very creative. Um, he's done a tremendous job with us. He's, he's been a guy who's thrown the ball every down in his career with Drew Brees and empty sets to running the ball and being, being really run oriented at Arkansas in our place. So he can do a lot of things and he's a talented coach and he did a, a, a tremendous job for us in the time that he spent with us. So we wish him all the luck in the world except for one game. Coach, to your left, standing up. Hi, Coach. Uh, Cole Pepper, Channel 4 in Jacksonville. There's been a lot of talk about the future of the Georgia-Florida game in Jacksonville, and a lot of the talk is centered around the impact that it has on recruiting or on-campus visits and so forth. Could you talk specifically about how you think that having that game off campus in a neutral site has impacted uh, your program and your recruiting efforts? Yeah, I think anytime you look at things – from a self-analysis and you say, okay, let's do quality control. How can we get better? How can we grow? Um, how do we improve? All the things that we were talking about earlier, where we go, how do we improve at recruiting? Um, getting opportunities to present, your, put your best foot forward to have people into your home. So you build a $63 million facility at your home location and you want to develop relationships with kids. Every opportunity you miss to have a kid at your home is an opportunity to get better. We don't look at things from a scope of, well, we had the number three or number two or number six or number 10 recruiting class. That's, that doesn't matter. We're trying to figure out how to get better. And the best way to get better is to have opportunities to present in front of those kids. Down to your second row. Brandon Adams from Dog Nation. In 2017, you made the playoff with a quarterback and started the year as your backup. If you were to be thrust in that position again this year, given the fact that Jake was a really highly regarded recruit, is it fair to say that would be more difficult this year, given that your backup quarterbacks aren't quite the same level of prospect on paper Jake was then or maybe Justin was a year ago? You know, I don't know that you can go off the rating that Justin was or Jake was. At the end of the day, Justin was a true freshman backup. Jake was a true freshman backup. They both were highly regarded coming in. But – I also think that we have a young man who has a lot more experience than either one of them had, being that he had an opportunity to come in for a fall and go through a fall with us. He had a chance to go to a Mississippi Juco and be able to play. And there's no value greater than going and playing. And he went and played. So you could make the case that we would have a more seasoned veteran guy. Now, is he as talented as those guys? I don't know. I think that's yet to be determined. And I think he continues to get better. And we hope that Dewan will be able to compete with him for that once he's cleared. Coach to your left, the camera bank. Hey, Coach Smart. Simone Eli, CBS 42 in Birmingham. What would you say is the biggest coaching philosophy or belief that you have that you took from your time at Alabama with Coach Saban that you still use today? Oh, man, there's a lot. I mean, I could go on for days, but just the line of scrimmage wins championships, and you've got to sign big football players to be successful, whether it's offense or defensive line. 
We have time for two questions up on the camera bank in the blue shirt. Yeah, the depth he's been able to establish. He does a great job of uh, getting quality players in there. They've you know, had several kids they beat us on, whether they're in their state or our state. Um, they're very relentless in their efforts to recruit. Um, this quarterback impresses me. He's a leader. He's a guy who's played. Anytime you're playing a guy with that kind of experience, it's very similar to Jake, except for he's got one whole year on top of that, and they've got some good wideouts coming back with him. Back row, please. Uh, the most, the, the biggest thing with each one was competitive nature. They, they go to a seven on seven tournament and they dominate. They go to a camp and they dominate. They go to a high school football game, they're the guy the coach is trying to get the ball to. So more than intangibles of vertical leap, 40 yard dash, hand size, just the fact that those guys are taking over opportunities when given the opportunity. Now they're going to get thrust into a different world when they go out there against SEC level competition and the biggest change for a kid like that is that now this defensive back is in my face and he's talented. At high school level a lot of times those guys see off coverage. They don't have people get up on them because they don't want to, they can't physically match up with them. People will match up with them in our league and they got to get used to that. Thank you Coach Mark. Thank Appreciate you guys. Your time.